Many people undervalue silence. The strength of silence can seem contradictory in a society that exhorts us to speak out, share our ideas, and continuously be in the clamor. But when handling narcissists, quiet turns out to be among your most effective weapons. This is a planned, strategic and conscious retreat from the turmoil narcissists feed upon, not the stillness of apathy or resignation. Narcissists get their kicks from control, validation, and attention. They are the center of their own universe and want everyone to revolve around them. So, they are constantly praised or even adversely reacted upon for their provocations. Any kind of involvement, from flattery to confrontation, fuels their sense of relevance. This is why it feels as though they are constantly winning in contacts with a narcissist, because they control the circumstances to guarantee some sort of response. You hand greater authority to them the more you participate. Here stillness turns as your most effective weapon. Choosing silence helps you to recover your authority. You are leaving the game the narcissist has so painstakingly created, one in which their wants come first and your reactions are only tools for their self-aggrandizement. Silence takes away the emotional vitality the narcissist needs. It is the ultimate act of opposition, it says nothing at all rather than screaming loudly. Masters of provocative behavior are narcissists. Whether your reaction is tears, frustration, or fury, they know how to press your buttons and say or do the precise thing that will set off that emotion. They are quite good at setting circumstances where you feel driven to defend yourself, to rationalize your emotions, or to explain your behavior. But they win the instant you participate. This is their field of expertise, they are masters of word choice and emotional manipulation. You slide more into their trap the more you try to reason with them or challenge their actions. Silence disrupts this cycle when you choose it. It is a denial of involvement in their drama. Stopping your response to their provocations leaves the narcissist without a target. Initially ramping up their efforts to bring you back in, they may become more pushy or manipulative but finally they will move on to someone who will provide the response they want. Silence deprives the narcissist of what he requires, attention. Said another way, I will not play by your rules anymore. This can first be rather challenging, particularly if you are accustomed to trying to reason with the narcissist in your life or defend yourself. The need to react, to defend yourself, to clarify can be debilitating. But you start to see the power quiet has over time as you hone the craft of stillness. The manipulation of the narcissist no longer emotionally hooks you. You are outside their reach now. Silence allows you the time to guard your mental and emotional health, to stand back and observe the reality for what it is, a poisonous dynamic that only keeps on when you let yourself be pulled into it. Another restriction is silence. You will not put up with manipulation or abuse. Quite clearly and firmly, narcissists are quite poor in regard to respecting limits. They regard your time, your energy, and your emotional resources as rightfully theirs. They will try your limitations, prodding and pressing until you yield. Still, quiet can be a means of marking a line on the sandy shore. I will not participate in this behavior, it states. I will not respond the way you are expecting. And for many narcissists, this is absolutely aggravating. They are utilized to be able to shape events in their advantage and to run the story. Silence steals their ability to be powerful. Silence does not, of course, imply you overlook negative behavior totally. It's not about acting as though the narcissist's behavior has no negative effects or that their manipulation goes unpackled. Silence, then, is about disengagement emotionally. It's about realizing that behavior of a narcissist cannot be changed by arguments or explanations. One cannot reason with someone who is essentially unable to look past their own needs and aspirations. Silence is about avoiding to be caught in their poisonous dynamic so preserving yourself from more damage. Silence has a significant psychological impact as well for the narcissists. Though they seem to be confident and superior, narcissists are really quite insecure. Their brittle self-esteem is supported by outside validation. Refusing to offer that validation, through positive reinforcement or negative confrontation, leads them to doubt their influence over you. 
Although silence knocks narcissists off balance, they are frequently masters of reading people and controlling their emotions. They cannot readily understand or control this response. Initially more aggressive in their attempts to elicit a reaction, the narcissist will start to feel over time that their regular strategies are failing. Frustration, uncertainty, and perhaps even fear of losing their hold on you can follow from this. Silence allows you the time to heal as well. Dealing with a narcissist can wear one emotionally. Their relentless demand for attention, their manipulation, and their lack of empathy can saps your vitality. Choosing quiet gives you the chance to stand back, restore your emotional balance, and concentrate on your own welfare. Prioritizing your mental health helps you to take charge of the circumstances. Silence lets you sort out your feelings in your own time free from the pressure to answer the provocations of the narcissist. When dealing with a narcissist, quiet is in many respects the ultimate kind of self-care. It's a means of establishing limits that secure your well-being and of shielding you from more emotional damage. It's also an empowering act. Choosing silence lets you recover your power from the narcissist. You are no longer letting them govern your behavior or determine your emotional reactions. Instead of letting your story be controlled for their own benefit, you are reclaiming it. Silence does not mean you support the conduct of the narcissist or let them to keep harming you. Actually, silence is sometimes a sign of approaching strict limitations or perhaps divorcing the connection totally. It's a means of building the emotional distance required for clarity and situational perspective. Once you have taken back your power via quiet, you may decide more wisely on how to proceed, that is, whether to cut links with the narcissist or impose tougher limits in your contacts with them. Dealing with a narcissist can be especially challenging because of the sense of powerlessness involved. Their manipulation might make you feel imprisoned, as though the circumstances are beyond your influence. Silence, however, reminds us that we do have control. You can decide how you treat the narcissist, that is, whether or not reply. Refusing to participate in their destructive behavior will help you guard your emotional well-being. And by doing this, you reclaim the self-respect and autonomy the narcissist has so labored to eradicate. Silence is not about gaming or trying to control the narcissist in return either. It's not about hurting them or making them insecure with silence acting as a weapon. Rather, it's about realizing that interacting with the narcissist just helps the cycle of manipulation and abuse to be maintained. Silence is a means of selecting a better and more serene road for oneself and of opting out of that loop. Silence is your best weapon against narcissists in the end since it deprives them of the attention and control they so much need. It lets you stand outside their poisonous dynamic and safeguard your emotional health. It's a means of establishing limits, recovering from the emotional damage they have inflicted, and reclamation of control. Although at first it could be challenging, the practice of silence is finally an act of empowerment a means of rejecting manipulation any longer and taking charge of your own story.